here at Microsoft, and I'm with Mark Freeman, who uh, works with MS Dining to give us all the lowdown. Mark, tell me a little bit who MS Dining is and what you guys do. Yeah, so MS Dining is a, a name for all of the restaurants that we have, the cafes that we have in Microsoft, specifically here in Redmond, but also across North America. Um, we have about 43 cafes here in Redmond. Um, 37 of these espresso kiosks, and uh, it keeps us busy. Uh, we serve about 35,000 meals a day. Wow. Now, now we're at a place called The Commons, and you can see the, the, the Pike Place sign back here. Talk about the sign and talk about The Commons. Well, so The Commons is a, is a concept that was developed about three or four years ago, um, and we survey our employees every year. And, and uh, one of the things that came out of the survey was related to um, Variety. They want more variety in, in their dining uh, experience. And so we started a program called Local Brands, which we bring local restaurants into our cafes and they sell their wares and we kind of gave them the space in the cafe to set up their, their uh, products. And we found it to be real successful. And so when we started the design of the commons, uh, we, we actually looked at two things. One is helping our employees be more productive. And the other one is this local brands program, right? So we again surveyed our, our employees and found out that, um, you know, what are they doing when they're not working, right? So they're going to the post office, bike shop, or, you know, whatever it is. And so again, when we were designing this, we looked at those options to bring into this space. So we have 14 restaurants, uh, all local brands. Um, we, you know, support the local economy and, and uh, you know, so you won't find a Burger King or a McDonald's or anything like that in here. And, uh, and then also these, these uh, retail spaces, there's nine ret retail spaces. We have a bank, we have a post office, we have a bike shop, we have massage and, uh, and hair salon. <laughs> so, you know, we, we kind of incorporated it all into the space. So talk a little bit about a typical cafe. What do, we, what do we normally as employees get when we go into a typical cafe? Because this isn't typical. There's only right. one the commons. Right. And then pretty much almost in every building, there's our own cafeteria. Right, right. So what, what is the experience there like? So well, again, we, we found out that our, our employees wanted variety in this space. So we have what we call the, the four staples. So we have, we have a, a grill, a salad bar, a pizza, and deli, right? And those are the four things that we have in all the cafes. And then, um, then we build around that, again, with our local brands. So we might have a Mexican theme or an Asian theme. Also in the buildings, there's a couple of kitchenettes, which provide. Everyone's always surprised when they come that we get free yep. milk and sodas yep. and juices. Explain sort of the blocks behind that and how much we go through on a daily basis. Yeah, so this is one of those kind of sacred cows that <laughs> we deal with at Microsoft. Uh, I, I believe that it started back when, you know, when Bill and... And Paul started the whole thing, and it was just kind of one of those perks that um, hung on. And now, like I said, it's a sacred cow. We can't we can't get rid of it because it's just part of our culture, right? So, we have um, we have about a little over 500 kitchenettes, um, one on every floor in every building, um, and we serve 30 about 35 different kinds of beverages. Uh, you know, milk. Uh, you know, the Pepsis, the Cokes, the uh, tomato juice, that sort of thing, um, in all of them. And then about two years ago, we introduced a new product called the iCup, um, or the Interactive Cup, which is um, a Starbucks product. You know, you push a button, and within 90 se seconds, you have a fresh cup of coffee. And um, we, again, just this year, we introduced uh, the Seattle's Best Coffee into it. So we have uh, a couple different options with the iCup. And then finally, there's also some are there like Starbucks's or Tully's? There's also little caf coffee shops within a bunch of the buildings. What's that? Yeah, so we have espresso stands in just about every every location connected with the uh, with the cafes. Um, most of them are Starbucks, uh, but we have introduced um, like here at the Commons we have Cafe Vita. So we've kind of branched out a little bit from the Starbucks, but you can get all of your espresso drinks. Uh, and uh, you know, and, and fresh coffee if you'd like, and donuts and pastries and that sort of thing. But again, it brings variety to the space. And it seems like you're definitely going in a more green, environmentally friendly. Since I've been here for five years, and we've sort of seen a progression of compostable yep. stuff. Yep. Talk a little bit about the materials used in those funny wooden spoons that we get to eat with. Yeah, so that was uh, <laughs> that was an interesting story. But um, to kind of start out on a broad picture. Um, Again, about two or three years ago, we looked into this green option, and um, we 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 worked with a company or an association, a nonprofit that's called um, the Green Restaurant Association, 
and they have a, a star system that they uh, that they as you as you grow and get more green, you get higher stars. Um, currently, we're at three stars. There was 40 restaurants in the whole U.S. that became uh, three star green. Um, we we happen to be one of those. The only corporate campus in in actually the world that can say that. Um, so we're we're trying to be ahead of it with green. Um, you know, we do a lot with with uh, our disposables, as you talked about, we, we have um, disposable ware, it's all compostable. Um, it's sent to Cedar Grove, which is a compost facility here in Seattle. Um, but the, the, the story around the silverware is kind of interesting because the, we have conflicting things going on with the government versus the environment, right? And so um, the health department tells us that our soup needs to stay, stay at 80, 180 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, to, to you know, hold it at the right temperature, but our spoons and forks and knives melt at 160 <laughs> degrees, okay? So we have this gap. There were fun experiments, experiments happening in some of the Yes, yeah, so I know that. And, and uh, so we brought in the wooden spoons just because they're also recyclable, and we brought those in to compensate for some of the, the discourse that's happened <laughs> with, the, with the melting of the, of the product. But the industry hasn't caught up with, you know, with it, and we're actually, again, leading it. We're, we're, because of the volumes that we have, um, we're we're kind of creating a market. Um, so we're working with other large companies to help, you know, get things going and have uh, a products designed and 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 built, if you will, um, to help, you know, to get closer to this these problems that we're running into. So before I let you go, Mark, let's go over some fun MS dining stats. Okay. Uh, well, I'll start out with the uh, the beverage program. There's, you know, we go through 24 million cups. Uh, annually, which is about two million a, a month, about 5.4 million cartons of milk, nine million cans of pop. We have 521 of these uh, of kitchenettes, um, about 875 beverage coolers. I spoke about the eye cup, which is 618 eye cups, 565 microwaves, about 10,000 gallons of fire grease, fryer grease around uh, annually is what we go through, and what we do is we send it to a a local facility and they render it into biodiesel. Oh, wow. um, we're looking into some, maybe some options of bringing back that, that biodiesel and putting it in our shuttle system here to be, so it's kind of a closed circle, if you will. In the back of the house, in our ki kitchens, we monitor how much food we're producing so that we can reduce the amount of waste we have, but we also separate all the compost from the recycle from what goes to the landfill and actually been able to affect what goes to the landfill by about 50% so far, and we're still um, actually moving forward on that number. So, we, And our goal is by 2012 to be, um, to be waste-free or, or to have zero go to the landfill. So we're really making some progress with that. Mark, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, let's eat. <laughs>